Dr. Alika Kare received her PhD degree from IIT Kanpur in 1989. And after her PhD, she joined Institute for Plasma Research in Gandhinagar and continued to work as a fellow for about four years. She joined IIT Guwahati as a lecturer in 1995 and is currently a professor with the Department of Physics in IIT Guwahati. Her current research interests include laser, laser matter interaction, laser interferometry, plasma diagnostics, and atom lithography. On this occasion, Dr. Alika Kare wishes to share about her journey with optical sciences with us. Please welcome her. Uh, thanks for, to the organizer for inviting me for this uh, unique kind of a conference. And I would like to thank uh, Asima especially because she wrote to me and I think uh, uh, almost immediately I responded, yes, I will uh, be there. But afterwards, I was a bit confused that what should I speak on. So slowly I collated my memories that how I evolved and I am quite sure that the youngsters may find it interesting and also it may give them uh, some uh, what i should say uh, it may help them in also taking the some of the bold decisions. so that is why i have given the title of my talk as my journey with optical sciences of course it was a uh, um, again as uh, 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 Urvashi was saying that if i mention the number of decades it will be unveiling your age so, so so i won't mention that how many decades this uh, journey is there but it was interesting and has the all the modes of the life hidden into it so let us see that uh, that how i evolve with my uh, journey uh, so the the if i am here the lots more people have contributed to this it's not that uh, uh, individually and the foremost thing is the teachers and the parents and the family support then uh, in the scientific world nothing goes uh, without the money so the I was able to tap uh, the I think most of the Indian funding agencies government agencies and uh, I had the horizontal expansion in my field of research that is because of my uh, number of collaborators from the different stream uh, particularly in IIT Guwahati and also I was I am fortunate to have some collaboration with some of the institutes in the country so those things are listed here some of the uh, collaboration is still going on and the some of the collaboration has evolved uh, me into some interesting results and um, may, may may not be having the still the active collaboration <coughs> with some of them but still uh, they need the recognition or, or I will say they need the acknowledgement because it has shaped uh, uh, at uh, times. And the fourth uh, acknowledgement is to all my students who have beard with me my temperament of hard work, expecting them to do hard work. And uh, of course, the, the, these are the, my uh, PhD students who have already graduated and at this moment i have the team of the four the students uh, they are quite young at this moment and along with them the numerous msc and the btech students and also the interns from the various institutes within the country who have also contributed in a tidbit manner so and and being an academic institute as you know the work task force is the students only and so they really deserves the uh, Acknowledgement. Okay, so I have planned my layout just to share a few memories of my childhood and schooling, and then the more professional, the experience during PhD, and uh, professional how well was my experience during my professional career, and in between the some life events, and what is my take home message for the youngsters. So to begin with the early childhood memories, particularly the exposure to the light, of course, that time uh, I was very young, maybe the four or five years old only. And the, the very first thing which impressed me is the 
slide projector many of the youngest don't know what is this because now we have the, oh, the all this uh, lcd displays are there but my father being engineer he made the slide projector and uh, it is not this one because that time the color photography was not there in the country but it was looking something similar to that and it has the two wings where you can put the two slides and you can push it onto the one side to have the display of one slide and push it onto the other side to have the display of the slide. And the slide used to look something like that and we always used to have this uh, slide show uh, during our birthday parties where the, towards the end some story within the four, four, five, six slides will be narrated. So I was quite amazed. but. As, uh, the, as a child, you will be amazed and the questions will be coming how it is doing, but then uh, simultaneously you see some other interesting thing and so these questions do not give you much botheration at all. The second thing which amazed me is the, I think all of you must have done this, burning of the paper and the cotton with the lens. Uh, so this, uh, everybody has done it and I remember it because uh, sometime my uh, eldest sibling used to burn my hand if he is annoyed with me. So, so that is why I remember it and I realized that okay, sun is very powerful. The third thing is I think some of you might also have done, making the soap film. So while washing the hands with the soap, you do like this and then join the thin film and put it like that. And then watch the colors moving like this, colors are changing. And it was very amazing for me and I will be doing this till the time the film bust or till the time I get the scolding key, please uh, come out fast because you will be getting late. And uh, I never understood that at that time. So I used to think that if you look at different angles, probably everything uh, changes its color, but uh, that didn't happen with my dresses. So anyway, but as I said earlier also that as a child, you don't carry the questions long. So no, no worry at all. And then comes to the schooling. So early schooling, it was happy go, easy go. In our time, the school also used to have a lot of discipline and at the home environment also a lot of discipline. But overall, it was quite a happy go, early go. And I studied in a, being from the middle class family, I studied in a very local school. And uh, not uh, nothing much to narrate about it, apart from the fact that we have the strong emphasis on the mathematics and language. Uh, the reason being that my mathematics teacher in the school was very good and she motivated me. And apart from the fact that my father being engineer, he was the electrical engineer. So the, the, it was a natural inclination towards mathematics and mother has more inclination towards literature. So I started developing the, some interest into the languages also. And in the school, of course, there will be always some encouragement or the rejection. Some teachers may like you, some teachers may not like you. So that is a very normal part of the upbringing. If you are doing well, teachers will be liking you. But in some subjects, if you are not doing well, those teachers may not like you. So this always happened. And uh, in the schooling, I think eighth, ninth class, we are introduced with the concept of the reflection and the, the reflection, etc. Uh, that was okay, we do some experiment with the prism, but uh, it was a normal thing, but somehow I liked it that it was very interesting. And apart from this uh, academics, I was very much interested into the sports and other extracurricular activities, and more so because my mother used to encourage me a lot. And camera was, of course, uh, I, I started developing the passion for camera, but uh, that time the camera also used to be a luxury, unlike uh, nowadays. And so I will be always given that task in order to satisfy my, my this uh, preference. I always used to be given the task to hold the camera case. That time the camera used to be a little bit big. I think the photograph, it is the old photograph, which is not coming well, but I am holding the camera case. So I used to feel happy that, okay, I have some ownership. So apart from that, I don't recall uh, much amusement with the optics or much uh, uh, interest towards the optics. Then came the college life. College life was slightly different than the school life. Uh, one reason was that I belonged to a very small town where the major profession used to be either farming or business. 
So obviously I was having the altogether different background with more inclination towards their studies rather than the other young girl who will be more worried about their fashion dresses and all those things. So they used to put me into a altogether a different categories that I am a altogether a different category. And most of the time I used to be the loner. And one more reason for being the loner was that that time the combination of the subject used to be physics, chemistry, biology more. But I have opted for physics, chemistry, and maths. So in that, the whole class uh, of 50, they will, there will be only one or two students who will be having the mathematics along with the science. In the arts side, of course, the quite a number of students used to be with the mathematics. So our maths class used to be with the arts side. So there also I will be loner because I am from the science stream. And in the science stream also I will be loner because I am having a mathematics and not the biology. So I have grown that way in almost into the isolation, but uh, never bothered about it. In BSc, I was in the co-ed co in the sense that it was the co-ed only for science students. Again, the biology group was very strong in terms of the number of girls in this co college, whereas I was in minority because we have a class of 40 or 50 students and we were just the three girls having those kind of a thing. So then I realized the concept of minority. Before, before that, I never realized the concept of minority, being in minority. And uh, since it was the co-ed and the, the total college student was, I think, 2,000 and out of the 2,000, hardly 50 students were there. So around 48 or the 47 students from the bio group and uh, we will be only two or three students. So the teachers were uh, having the, I have the experience of the teachers, uh, particularly male and female teachers in a slightly mixed manner. Most of the female teachers were very encouraging and uh, male teachers, again, the two categories, some of the male teachers thinks that the college student uh, in the boys college, they should not roam around. So if we have a free period and we are walking on the corridor, sometime they will catch hold of us and then scold us, no, no, please go to your um, uh, girls' room. So we were given a girls' room so that if we have the, the vacant period, empty period, no classes, we, have, we are supposed to sit there. So that was the, the gender biasing which started coming to my mind. But otherwise, not much difference. Uh, because I was extremely good into the studies, so not much of an issue. I was very fond of going into the library, and uh, most of the time, if I have the free period, I will be most of the time will be in the library rather than in the girls' school. And uh, that time, we, the optics starts. So many of you have undergone this, and the optics experiment used to be always uh, troublesome for me. I was somehow not very much happy with the uh, experiments on the optics. Simple. Uh, uh, reflection experiment and uh, recording the spectrum, etc. And then the lens experiment, which were very, t that time I used to feel it is a torture. But slowly I was getting the exposure with the laser through the general article or something like that. And I was developing the fascination for the lasers. But sports continued. This is the, uh, the photograph of me. I am here. And uh, this is a very funny race that you are supposed to hold the earthen pot on your head. Uh, with the water full of it and you have to then you're not supposed to hold it but none of us were having from that background where we will able to run so we have we uh, we broke the rule and we said that we are going to hold the uh, this uh, earthen pot otherwise we are not going to participate so we were allowed to hold it and uh, we went along then comes the, uh, the MSc which was a slightly uh, game changer simultaneously yes uh, as I told you that I was very fond of going to the library and I was having the difficulty in understanding the basic concepts of optics in, phys in uh, BSc level. So I went to the library and I got these two books, Principle of Optics and Jenkins and White. Uh, in contrary, people find the Jenkins and White more easy, but somehow I find this Principle of Optics more comfortable. And till today also I find that it is as old as modern because all the modern concepts like plasmonics, the periodic arrays of plasmonic, etc., all those things are uh, well explained in that book. So I then I started developing a little bit more the inclination towards optics. And when I entered into the MSc, I have seen the first laser in a trade fair in uh, Pragati Maidan. I think the difference, uh, if I remember correctly, it is the defense pav pavilion in which they have brought the CO2 laser, and that is the first exposure when I see the laser, and they, they also showed us the 
burning of the paper. So I was very much happy that okay, this is a like a sun source or something like that. And then, uh, of course, in most of the, the that is true in most of the Indian universities that in the MSc level we hardly have the course on optics. So, and I was uh, developing the interest into the laser. So, from the library, I got this Svelto's book, which I think everybody must have read. Must have read. But that was the first volume. The color was not <laughs> like that. It was, I think, the red in color, and it was a small size. And I was, I think, I have read the complete book, but uh, the resonator part. I could not understand that thing, but other, other things I was able to follow because other things are the quantum mechanical thing and we were, uh, I was fortunate to have a very good teacher in the quantum mechanics, so I was able to follow. So that is how my interest starts developing in the subject. And then I proceeded for my PhD. So that was the, my research, commencement of my research journey. And of course, the motivation was from family because of the educated family background. I was fortunate to have the educated family background. So my parents said that, no, you must pursue the higher education. Till that time, I was not having a very clear idea that what I should do. But my parents motivated me that you should now go for the research. So I joined IIT Kanpur. The other, I will say that I was fortunate that I was uh, able to qualify their entrance exam and I joined IIT Kanpur. But this was the another area which started with a lot of challenges, lot of failures, and uh, the, of course the, 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 the some success was there, otherwise I wouldn't have been here. So I will just uh, share a few of my experience during my PhD time. So this was actually an eye-opening uh, experience of me because uh, uh, my supervisor, uh, the supervisor used to be assigned by the department and my supervisor, he just joined one year back only and he has a more on the theoretical background rather than the experimental background. Of course, I have the, the idea that I will work in both theory as well as experiment, but since he joined only one year back, so theory, no issue, but the experimental, there was absolutely no lab. There was a very big space given. And uh, Asima might be able to recall because my lab was vertically up. Of course, that time Asima was not in picture. So that was a huge room, but it was uh, like a junkyard. And the back of it, the one room was there in which my supervisor used to sit. And then he made some screens, just like these kinds of, not this, this is the board, just like the poster screens. And that was the partition was made. And then I was given some uh, uh, vacuum system to play with it. So that is how I started. But of course, the, the, it was an eye-opening experience and I have learned a lot of things and being the, the, for quite some time, I was the only research scholar and there was nothing in the lab. So a lot of things are to be purchased and all those things, which is a very essential part of the training and which is very much required from the, for the PhD student point of view or, or when you want to have the professional career into research. So my training in a way unintentionally started that we have to buy something and then, uh, or I will be proposing my supervisor that we need this thing. So he will just give me such a thick catalog. That time it was not the, the debt or the do the Google search, click away something. It was not there. He will give me this much thick catalogs of either Malice Gray or Newport or whatsoever he has. And I have to search it and then talk to him and then write a letter to the vendor and asking for the quotation and some more detailed specifications. So it was really a good learning period and I was, uh, uh, though I, uh, to begin with, I was asked to work with the laser induced plasma, but uh, the laser uh, which was given to me, that was the excimer laser and that went bad. So I switched over to the, the other problem and ended up into fabricating this uh, laser, which was the cadmium plasma recombination laser. And uh, then there was a lot of publicity of this and this photo has appeared on the, <coughs> the various platforms. And one can see that this is a completely glass system, vacuum system below which is also completely a glass system, only diffusion pump was the metallic system. And that time we were not having a very good uh, glass to metal seal either. So every day in the night, uh, beyond the midnight, three o'clock or so, I will be leaving the system which was intact and morning you come and you will realize that there is a, some leak or some other leak and then you have to go and catch hold of the glass blower, ask him to repair it and then redo your journey. This is the complete uh, schematic diagram of it. This I have taken from my own PhD thesis. But I was happy that uh, we, I was able to make a laser and uh, which was my passion. 
and uh, I always say that this laser was my first affair, first and the last affair, I will say. So, uh, so this was my passion and I was really very happy that, okay, I could succeed into it. Then I continued for a year, of, of course, the, the, it's not that it is always the hardship, we also have enjoyed uh, life like anything. Nowadays, children have, uh, the, all the youngsters have the pizza party, burger party. We had the, that time the Maggie was the first product which was launched uh, as a ready to eat food, almost ready to eat food. So that used to be the passion. So anything we have to celebrate, we used to celebrate the Maggie. So in these plates, there is a Maggie there. And then uh, this was the another photograph I find it very interesting. I think many of you will recognize this person. His Morrison, the... <laughs> his Morrison, and I think he came to install that Andy Yard laser. He's the owner of Spectra Physics, uh, uh, Spectra Physics laser, whatever is the name, I forgot. Yeah, laser Spectra Physics. So he was there, he was also pretty young, and he came for the installation, and this was on the Christmas day. So he said, first we will celebrate the Christmas, and then we will go for the installation. Yes, uh, the, another interesting thing is, was that uh, when I completed my PhD, uh, the, after completion of my PhD or maybe completing the, the thesis writing, some of my students, they said that you said that you have made the laser, you show that how your hands are stable for al aligning the resonator. So they gave me a challenge that you hold the mirror mount for one minute and we will see whether your laser is going to change or not. So I literally hold the, the, the mirror mount and showed them that there was no change into the output. So then at the time of my farewell for my IIT Kanpur, they gave me that title, title in the sense that gave me the remark that if anything could be more straight than the laser, it is Alika. And for her, it is more easy to make the laser rather than making the two minute Maggie. So that time, because I told you that the Maggie was a very important thing that time. So th those are the, some sweet memories uh, which came after a lot of hardship. So it is not that the laser was made immediately. There was a lot of a struggle. Every day there will be failure. Some circuit will be bust because the whole electronics was homemade. So every day some uh, uh, circuit will break. Some uh, vacuum system will break, which I already told you, and there, there may be some water problem also, because the lab was not well equipped, and during the summer time, the overhead tank water will become very hot, and the, the, because of that circulation of the water tube will swell, and then it will bust. And it will bust when you are not in the lab. So either it will be bust during the lunch time, or it will bust during the tea time when we are not in the lab. So you have to come back, remove all the water, and then dry the lab, switch on the heaters, etc., so that the lab will get dry. Now it is, of course, uh, those problems are not there because the little bit effort is also being made uh, towards the infrastructure. So then I continued in the uh, IIT Kanpur only for one year, and that was the time when the, the Center for Laser Technology was formed. Now it has been given the name of Center for Laser and the Photonics Technology. So I was appointed as the scientific officer there, and the, the uh, since it was a new uh, department or the new center, the, I'm sorry to say, Asima, but the, the little bit administ administrators were also not very sure that what kind of work they should give. But since the center has come up, so a lot of money was there, so a lot of equipments were procured. So, and the, the, since the infrastructure money was also there, so most of the time I was busy with the renovation work and the installation of the equipment, etc. And very, very small administrative responsibility was given. After that, I joined Institute for Plasma Research Gandhi Nagar, where I worked for five years and not four years. So uh, there, it was another day, game changer for me. Uh, I, I will talk about my experience over there, uh, some of the pros and cons of working into the pure research organization and the attitude of peers. So that is the first time I started facing that, uh, or started understanding that how your life will be if your boss is cooperative or he is non-cooperative. So there I was given the, the project of the, uh, onto the neutral beam diagnostic, which was altogether insulated from the laser. So that was the first setback to me. I went and talked to my boss also that, why don't you give me some laser? He said, no, no, 
you should do always something different, which I do agree, but still the, the, if you have a passion for something, you should allow the, the, your, the youngsters also to continue with that. So the, the, uh, the problem with the pure research organization is not like RRI, right? but to the, the Institute for Plasma Physics or the DA organization, or maybe to some extent DRDO and CSIR also, though I should not comment on the DRDO or CSIR or something where I haven't worked, but I, that is my own experience, that you cannot choose your own research area. That is the major problem. And if you come from the, the good institute like IIT, you are used to choosing your own work and proceed the way you want. So that was a very different thing. And uh, at least I felt that the bureaucracy was too much there. Of course, the group culture was introduced to me because uh, in the academic institutes, till today also, the group means the supervisor and his team of five to 10 students. So that, uh, that is the meaning of group in the present day, particularly in the academic institute. But everything else is the group culture, I have seen it there. Funding is not an issue because the project which will be given to you that is already sanctioned and the funds will be enormous. So that was not an issue. Workshop structure was very good in IPR. So you just go and explain something to mechanic. Even if you do not know the engineering drawing, he will draw the drawing and he will also explain you that how this drawing is, what is the meaning of, what is the, the, the meaning of the cross-sectional view, front view, back view and all those things. And that is how I learned the engineering drawing also. Apart from that, since the, the project was to integrate the neutral beam diagnostic, neutral atomic beam diagnostic to Aditya, so there were the lots of protocol to this tokamak. So that has made me to learn many more things, including the grounding, that how you have to take care of the grounding, because with the tokamak there are two, three kinds of grounding were going on. So which grounding is suitable or which ground, and why it is suitable and why it is not suitable, all those things. Uh, though those are the small things, but nowhere it is documented, so that is why I am trying to share it with you. That those small things, though they appear to be small things, but they do matter a lot. And in between, I entered into the family life, I got married, and uh, it was the, the arranged marriage, so nothing to uh, say about it, but I was that time in the Institute of Plasma Research only, and his spouse was altogether from a different background in the government service, which is a transferable job, so it, it didn't affect my career from that point of view. And I will share my few of the struggles uh, with the, the, my family life and the, my motherhood, uh, also, so th those are, I think, it will be better if I share. So the, in the marriage, as I said, that there was no change into the, the my lifestyle. Only thing was, these mobiles, etc., were not there, and doing the call was also very difficult at that time. So we have to religiously call each other by, by STD. So either my spouse will be calling, so I have to sit onto that STD, and if there is a delay, I might have to wait for half an hour, and everybody will be staring that what I am doing here, or I might be going to call. So that increased the financial burden onto us because that time also my monthly bill used to be 750 rupees with the around the 4,000 rupees of intake and now also my phone bill is 750 rupees. <laughs> so, so, so that has immediately brought this economic concept that okay, we have to cut down the many things from the, for my, our other expenditures so that we are able to talk uh, at least weekly. So that was the only change, not much change, but the major change I felt when we entered into the parenthood. So the, the, your actually total lifestyle changes for a brief period. Your living room will be like this. <laughs> you cannot have the things of your own, the full of toys and nursery rhymes, etc. Child, young baby will always want it to help you. And that helping is equivalent to no work or you have to redo the work. Now, if you have to redo the work, you have to be careful because if you are redoing the work, child will get hurt. That I have done this, why are you doing it again? So that was the problem. And then sometimes there will be completely a non-cooperation. So I wanted to take his snaps. He was participating in a uh, fancy dress show on the children's day. And he decided he, does, uh, he should not be snapped, so he uh, didn't get anything. He just uh, uh, picked up a paper plate from the floor and put uh, it in front of his face so that his photo should not be taken. But it is an enjoyable thing. As a parent, we really enjoy it. And that is a part and parcel of the system, as the previous speaker also said, that uh, that is a big responsibility, social responsibility. If we are doing science, we are also doing 
not only out of our passion, but also we are contributing in a some way or the other way to the society. So this is also a contribution that the generations should come up. Then I, yeah, I think I didn't mention in between that, yes, uh, so that time, huh, I will finish it five minutes, don't worry. So I had a good support from the family, family so that is why I could continue. But uh, the problem started coming up because my superiors were not very cooperative. And finally, I took the decision that I'm going to quit this place without thinking anything. This was my own decision. Only thing question which was asked by my family members was, are you going to be satisfied? I said, yes, because I'm not enjoying the place and uh, the baby is now more important. I will see it later on. So that was my own decision. So that, the, the, so that is why I took the break into the career and then entered into the IIT Guwahati right in the beginning. I think I was seventh or eighth faculty in the institute. And those was the tough days in particularly in Northeast. If you know in 90s, the situation was not very uh, favorable. Lots of uh, strikes used to be there. Uh, lots of bomb blasts used to be there. But somehow I decided that I will work there because at least the campus is going to be there, not immediately, but in future. And uh, where is there are the success and the failures as they are the part and parcel of the life. Um, so the, we had the responsibility of starting the academic program and developing the, the research lab, etc. So I formulated the laser and photonic group, but the group was with the single faculty because I was alone in the optical sciences for considerable amount of time. And the attitude of the, the superior was very cooperative, but uh, the contemporaries were mixed. Some were supporting, some were, some took it as the, 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 the me as their competitor. So their uh, behavior was not very congenial with me. Uh, and then, the, of course, the, the academic institute means that your budget will always be limited. So accordingly, based on the budget, only my research award. And it was again the starting from scratch. My PhD also starting from scratch. And even I was in IPR also, it was the starting uh, new project. So that was again a scratch. So that was not a much problem. But administrative problems were the administ administration was also given to me. This is the photograph of, not, not a very good photograph, but this is the during HOD, phase, HOD, when I was HOD for a period of three years. And then the child was also growing so uh, you have to manage somehow single-handedly with your family and uh, so, so somehow the things were if you're willing to work I think you can always manage the things and uh, I was also made sometime uh, almost a decade back as the Dean Academic Affairs that time I will just like to share that the some of my contemporaries they feel that as if I have snatched their uh, something from their pocket because they were the, the aspirant and I was nowhere into the picture, but I was made. And uh, so the obviously, as usual, some backbiting will be there. But I think the director was pretty cooperative and he didn't pay much attention. When he felt it is very intensive, then only once or twice he might have called me to just ask. And I told him that what is the issue and all those things. But I think in general, the superior's attitude was quite cooperative. But with my peers, I had a tough time. So these are the glimpses of just the two, three minutes more. So these are the glimpses of the lab which uh, I could develop. One lab was the laser and photonics. And uh, the space and infrastructure fight, which is always there. I think it is almost a global phenomena. You have to fight, and you have to justify it repeatedly, and then you will get it. So this is one of the NDR laser. And this is one of the uh, ablation chamber, or we can say pulse laser depression system. And the, actually, this photograph was taken long back. I was not having the copy of this photograph. This photograph is probably there in our uh, website somewhere. So I just uh, took it from there. And that is why the photo is not coming very nicely. But it is showing the couple of students they are working. The, another uh, lab which I developed was the nonlinear optics lab. And uh, the, there are the two, three experiments on this table itself. This is the more close view of those who are working with nonlinear optics lab. You know that this is the G-scan setup. Completely homemade and simple to make. So that is how, with, with the minimum cost, so that is how we thought that we will develop it here. 
just the two, three slides on the glimpses of my research work. So I started with the, the multiple beam interferometry because that you can do with the simple helium non laser and the couple of optical instrument. So, so low cost and it doesn't give you much threat to anybody because if you the, say that interferometry people used to think it is same basic interferometry which is there in the BSc or the MSc level. So they, they, it doesn't give a threat to your peers. And then when I got the uh, high power laser, so with the high power laser again we set up the multiple beam interferometer and then we used it to do, do the patterning onto the thin film. So this was the uh, micron level patterning and this is the, the sub micron level patterning touching up to the uh, wavelength of the laser. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, since in order to do the nonlinear optics you do require the material. So I thought let me have and I wanted to do on the miniaturized form so I wanted to do it on thin film so I thought that let me have my own coating system. And I had the experience with the laser and pl laser plasma interaction so we designed and fabricated, we got it fabricated this uh, pulse laser depulsion system and I think <laughs> I have uh, tried quite a large number of thin films. Uh, in fact, this list is very incomplete. And uh, one can see that the, the this is the G scan of Giordano film, this is the band gap tuning, and this is the random lasing, and many other applications. So I always tried that my work should also, apart from the, the fundamental in nature, it should also have the applied aspect. So try to see always the some application or the another application. And this is the laser liquid interaction thing where we can synthesize very easily the nanoparticle without having any <coughs> um, impurities into it. Quite a number of things we tried and we use these generated nanoparticles as the template for the SER. So one can see that the, the without the influence of the nanoparticle, this was done with the copper. In fact, silver data, I didn't put it. With the silver, it is much larger. And one can see that the, the red uh, color, uh, plot shows the uh, increase into the Raman signal in the presence of the nanoparticle. So just to, to this was the another uh, micro machining thing which we have done in the different shapes and sizes. This was done in collaboration with the mechanical engineering department. And this is the LIPS laser induced breakdown spectroscopy. And uh, so, so far my story is that the, the the success and the failure, they are part and parcel of the system. And uh, the, in the particularly career in optics, it is very rewarding because the, the number of people entering, at least in the country, they are very few. Probably the, because the exposure to the optics at the early age of education, that means particularly in BSc and MSc, is not in, it is not done in a very proper way. So they assume that it is not a very uh, good area to work or it is, not a, or, or they sometimes view is that very tough and simultaneously the mass also helps them because the majority of the crowd is into the other areas. And, uh, uh, but the hard work, there is no substitute for hard work and you don't need the previous background. If you work into optics, you can start from the scratch, starting from Jenkins and White or the Born and Bulls book and still you can go it. Depending on the funds, you can start with the very low fund and also you can go with the very high funds also and go for with the more frontier research. So take home message for the young generation is that first thing is particularly from the woman point of view, you have to be very focused which was also told by the previous uh, speakers. You have to set the priorities accordingly. Don't pay attention on the unnecessarily gossips, particularly in the professional life. I think professional life as well as the domestic life. And don't take undue advantage at all. And don't allow anybody to exploit you. Simultaneously cultivate your hobby. So with this, uh, I, I think conclusion is not required. I thank you, the organizer. These are, this is my sample of one of my hobby, which I don't know whether with this hobby I came into the uh, photonics or because of the photonics I am still cultivating that, I don't know. Thank you very much.